Abram and Sarai. Before this story, we learned about the Tower of Babel and mankind's attempts to be their own gods and make their name great. Now we learn about Abram, God's chosen hero to be the father of nations. The following is inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. As I said in yesterday's episode, God was already at work to bring about His great plan of redemption for the world. And today we're going to look at a pivotal figure in His plan, a man named Abram. If you've ever had to pick up and move from a place you've called home your entire life, you will relate to Abram. He was 75 years old when God called him to take his wife Sarah, leave his home, and go to a place he did not know. That sounds like a very stressful move to me. But you see, God had a plan for Abram, and it couldn't or wouldn't be accomplished if he stayed where he was. He needed to step out with faith and trust in God. Faith is a central theme throughout Abram's life. Often he passed the test of faith. Other times, as we'll see today, he struggled, tried to work out the problem in his own strength and wisdom. And as you can imagine, that doesn't work out well at all. But through it all, we'll continue to see how God is present, that he is provider and protector for Abraham and Sarah and all who trust in him. Let's listen in now to this story. Out of the line of Shem came Abram, a man well advanced in years. When Abram was 75 years old, the Lord spoke to him, saying, Go away from your country and your people to an unknown land. I have a place for you. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who dishonor you. And through you, all the nations shall be blessed. This was Abram's call to adventure, and he had no idea what the Lord would truly do through him. Yet he obeyed and left his father's land with his wife Sarai and his nephew, Lot. They journeyed together, determined to see God's will unfold before them. They set out to Canaan, the land God had chosen for them. There, God spoke to Abram, saying, This is the land I have promised to you and your descendants. Even now, as the Lord's will was being shown to Abram, he could not fathom what great things God would do. Abram pitched their tent in between Bethel in a place called Ai, and built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord. Shortly after, they ventured forth towards Negev to explore more of God's promised land. Later, there was a severe famine in the land. The land, once bursting with promise and opportunity, became desolate, and the once hopeful Abram decided to take his family and all his possessions to Egypt. There they lived until the famine was over. As they entered Egypt, doubt and paranoia began to seep into Abram's mind. Abram became fearful that Sarai's beauty would cause the Egyptians to kill him so they could take her. Abram, fearful and faithless, devised a lie. He spoke to his wife, saying, When we enter Egypt, do not tell them that you are my wife. Instead, tell them you are my sister. This way, my life will be spared, and they will treat me well. As expected, Pharaoh caught notice of Sarai's beauty, and brought her into his courts, so that he might be with her. And just as Adam put himself before his wife in the garden, so Abram did to his wife in Egypt. Pharaoh, to gain favor with Sarai, blessed Abram and adorned him with sheep, cattle, servants, and camels. Abram's lie was working. Yet God is not one to play partner in a lie. The Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues and revealed that Sarai was Abram's wife. Pharaoh, frantic and confused, demanded answers from Abram. What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? He shouted. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. So they went their way back to Canaan and settled in Bethel. This would be the first of many failures by Abram, yet God's enduring protection over him and his future was steadfast. Abram would need it, for the journey would only become more difficult. 
The forefather Abraham, the one with many sons, was called by that name. He lived in the land of Ur and was named Abram. Genesis 12 starts out with God speaking to Abram. I just absolutely love this promise that God makes to Abram in verses 1 through 3. Go from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. What an honor, what a privilege it must have felt like for Abram to hear God's promise that through him, God would bless the entire world. In order for that promise to be fulfilled, however, Abram and his wife Sarah had to trust in God like they had never done before. Imagine being told to leave your home, your family, your friends, your land, and go somewhere to be determined. Just go. Would you take that step? Abram, one of our great examples of faith in the Bible, did answer the call and embarked on the great adventure of faith. In many ways, this is a story of contrast that reveals a truth about our own journey of faith. At many moments, Abram is faithful, trusting, and fully in step with God's plans. He follows God to Canaan, the land that God chose for him. But then a famine hit, and Abram decided to leave for greener pastures. Without consulting God, he left and he went to Egypt. We're not told that God directed him there, so this was clearly Abram's idea. It was the beginning of a series of poor choices that demonstrated a lack of faith. This is not unlike you and me. When things get tough, we may often try to take things into our own hands rather than resting and trusting in the care and the providence and the promises of God. And then one bad choice begets another, and soon we find ourselves in a desert. That's what happened to Abram. He lied about his own wife, giving her to the Pharaoh to save his own skin. It seemed to work at first, but sin and lies always catch up to us, don't they? God stepped in and set Abraham back on course, but just imagine the loss of trust between Abram and Sarah and the erosion in their relationship. And still, as we've been seeing over and over again in each story, God's hand was there, his presence there to protect and provide for Abram and his family and for the ultimate purpose of God's glory and their redemption and the redemption of the world. May we be like the Abram who stepped out in faith, believing God, rather than the Abram who set off on his own course in fear. And may we find hope and comfort knowing that even when Abram lost faith for a while, God did not abandon him. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful story of your promise to bless the world through Abram. Help us to follow his example of faith and learn from his mistakes that were born of fear and faithlessness. May we trust in your ever-present grace and mercy to call us back to you when we walk away. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.